Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And welcome and a happy new year to all of you. It is great to see all of you here as today, we not only celebrate the new year, but we also celebrate the solemnity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. The intentions for this Mass is for the parishioners of St. Lawrence. And today's readings can be found on page 825, the Solemnity of Mary, the Holy Mother of God, year A. That's page 825. For those using the missiles, today's Eucharistic prayer is from Eucharistic prayer number one, and the preface will be preface number one of the Blessed Virgin. That's Eucharistic prayer number one, and preface number one of the Blessed Virgin. Before we begin Mass, just a quick reminder for those that have any cell phones, pagers, oh, hold on. Our parish now will be represented at the offertory of today's Mass by Ulysses, Lucia, and Yaneli, who will be bringing the gifts to the altar. Again. For those that have any cell phones, pagers, electronic devices, things that go beep, please turn them off at this time or silence them so that we can truly experience the wonder and awe of our worship today and give glory and respect to the God who loves us all. So please do this at this time, folks. As a loving, joyful, and thoughtful mother, Mary pondered God's wondrous gifts in her heart. Let us all now stand and praise our Lord and Savior by singing our opening hymn, number 144, Angels We Have Heard on High, number 144.
let us pray. O God, who, in de- who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, this is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God bless us in his mercy. 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 May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth. Among all nations, your salvation. May God bless us in his mercy. May God bless us in his mercy. May the nations be glad and exalt because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. May God bless us in his mercy. May God bless us in his mercy. May the peoples praise you, O God. And may all the peoples praise you. May God bless us. And may all the ends of the earth be. May God bless us in his mercy. 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 A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. 
Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. spoken to us through his son. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord.
Mary, the mother of God, that's, that's her greatest title. That is her highest honor, to be the mother of God. And for us encountering this mystery, like I mentioned, it stretches us in some very important ways. And that's true of, of any mystery, any truth that, that brings us deeper into the truth. It stretches us to, to grow in ways that maybe we otherwise would not. Sometimes, though, we have a hard time with that uh, as, as human beings. And in fact, throughout church history, it, uh, even though it is clearly the, the teaching of the church that, that Mary is the mother of God, and because of that, the, the teaching on who Jesus Christ is, is actually something that's largely agreed upon by, by all Christians throughout the world. All 30,000 plus denominations we largely agree on who Jesus Christ is. And it's because of this teaching on, on who Mary is. You see, in the, into the 300s and 400s, that, that entire time in church history, there was always some controversy surrounding who is Jesus. And there was a tendency by some groups to, to commit heresy. Heresy literally means, by the way, to cut off. To cut something off. And very often what is being cut off is the tension. People are looking to be released from the tension. Who doesn't want that from time to time, right? But tension literally is what makes good music in life. The strings of this piano, the strings of, of their vocal cords, all of our vocal cords, they have to be in tension to be able to make good music. And of many other musical instruments, that's true as well. And the tension here is that Jesus is both God and man. And not just part one, part the other, but he is fully 100% God and fully 100% man. And a lot of the early Christians had a tough time with that. Some would find little ways around that, and, and they, would, they would go to their heresies of choice, cutting themselves off from the truth, uh, truth and instead of embracing the tension, they, they would break, they would snap, and say things like instead, well, Jesus is just pure spirit, he's, he's only God, and the, it was an illusion, the physical, the physical manifestations that people saw of him. They, they wouldn't ever believe in a thing like the nativity scene, literally, as we do. They wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't believe in the body and blood of Jesus that we receive at Mass the way that we do. There were also others, on the other hand, who they would say that, well, Jesus was just a man. He was a very special man, but he was just a man. He was not God. And those who affirmed the faith at the Council of Nicaea, those who affirmed the faith at the councils leading up from that, and those are, by the way, by the way where we got our creed, the Nicene Creed, they said that Jesus is fully God and fully man. And it has everything to do with Mary being not just mother of the Christ, uh, Christotokos was the term they used. Yes, that's true. She is Christotokos, but she is also the Theotokos, the God bearer or the mother of God. And that was used as a proof by Saint Athanasius and by so many of the church fathers who, who believed correctly. They used that to show the true nature of Jesus Christ. Even though our minds affirm that belief, we can't fully understand it. There is still some part of it that, that remains in mystery. And that is why, though, we, we profess, when we profess our faith, we say that Jesus is God from God. True God from true God. Begotten, not made. And so, in other words... True God from true God. Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, is God. 
from the first person of the Trinity, the Father. And they always have existed together in eternity. And Jesus chose in a special way to become human and join us in this, in this physical world. That's, uh, that's also something that brings tension to our lives too. And on, on a day like this, when uh, each January 1st, as some of you may know, the Pope proclaims it a World Day of Peace. And, and he writes a letter about world peace each year. This year, Pope Francis highlighted the, uh, the conflict, the, the war in Ukraine with Russia as, as one of the challenges, one of the obstacles to world peace. He also highlighted all of the, the, the pandemic uh, that, that we had with, with COVID and, and all of the handling of that. He highlighted that as, as one of the challenges to world peace. And I'd like to focus on that second one just for a moment to notice that I know all of us, we experienced a lot of difficulties because of it. And one of the reasons it was so difficult was because all of a sudden, after March of 2020, we had people who did not live in our homes who were having a say about how we were going to handle our physical space. Think about that for a moment. When, when, when it seems like the whole world around you has more of a say about your own personal physical space, that's a tough thing to deal with, and it is a challenge to peace. And yet, it can become a good and wonderful thing, you know. Now, of course, we haven't fully figured out how to deal with that aspect yet, even, even now that we're past the pandemic stage of COVID, but that's that's always a challenge in some sense. People who live in our physical space, that can be, that can be a challenge to peace. And Jesus chooses to join us in our physical space. That is, that's perhaps the, the conflict or the tension that, that many of us can sometimes avoid when when maybe even though we profess the Nicene Creed as it is, God from God, begotten, not made, well, we sometimes maybe tend to keep Jesus at a distance as if, as if he's not in this physical world with us. When we could, we could embrace that tension and realize as Mary did, that that tension is the very tension that is, that is pulling us upward to heaven little by little each day. That is, that is the tension that gives life. Even though it's a struggle, it gives life to us. And so what, what do we do when there are conflicts inevitably from, from family, from people in our physical space, from people whose, whose views are different from our own? Well, one thing we can do is follow the example of our mother Mary, who is not just our mother, but God's own mother. And she takes all these things into her heart and ponders them. It's a way of meditation in the silence to let the heart, that, that tension in the heart become part of what God is looking at in us. And when we do that, we can, we can see the beauty of the deeper truth of how Mary is jo not just mother of the Christ, not just our mother, but she is mother of God. And how that gives us true hope, how that brings us into new, more abundant life. And that, that is a tension worth living in. That is something that stretches us for the better. Even though tempted as we might be to break, to snap, to cut off, God invites us to join in that tension so that we can embrace Mary as our true mother and Jesus as our true Lord and Savior as well as our brother.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Mother of God is Mary's greatest title. In humility and faithfulness, she gave birth to her Son, the eternal Son of God, the Word made flesh. Let us join her as we welcome, uh, as we come to the Father in prayer. For the church, that Mary will guide and protect her with motherly love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations on this world day of peace, that Mary, the Queen of Peace, will intercede to bring a genuine and lasting peace to our world, especially in Ukraine and in Haiti. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the orphan, the lonely, and the forgotten, that the sorrowful Mother of God will be their consolation and their joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For educators, that they may be credible witnesses, teaching fraternity rather than competition, and helping the youngest and the most vulnerable above all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families celebrating a new year, that they may share the happiness of the family of Nazareth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Lawrence Church and School, that we may grow in holiness and numbers as we resolve to follow Christ more faithfully this year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, the prayers in our Book of Prayer, and our prayer chains, and the prayers of all God's children, especially those gathered here today, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for uh, the repose of the soul of Pope Benedict, uh, Pope Emer Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth, and uh, for for the Church and for all who mourn him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, hear the prayers of your people gathered to honor the most holy mother of your Son, our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. During the offertory, please join in singing number 284, Holy is His Name, number 284.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God that just, just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, 
that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. as we come to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please join us in communion song number 283, Hail Mary, Gentle Woman, number Sin 
Just wisdom, teach us love. You were chosen by the Father. You were chosen for the Son. You were chosen. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come? to set us free this child that you deliver will deliver humanity Mary did you know that 
You're a baby boy with gifts sight to the blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, and the deaf will hear, and the dead will live again. The lame will leap, and the dumb will speak, the praises of Your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? This sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a few announcements. Um, for these next, uh, these next couple of weeks, we will not have our daily masses or confessions on Tuesday through Friday uh, because for two weeks I will be, I'll be out on vo vacation, so... Um, You'll be in my prayers, but I will not physically be here. So, uh, and, and we will, of course, have uh, a substitute priest um, one week from the Dominicans and one week from the, uh, the Catholic Cross Outreach um, uh, for each of the next two Sundays. But uh, daily Masses will resume on Tuesday, January 17th with our evening Mass at the usual time of 5.30 p.m. And our 2023 calendars... Those, as you may have noticed as you came in, those have arrived and are available on the tables in the narthex. There's also uh, a book called Holy Moments by Matthew Kelly. If, you're, if you or your family did not receive a copy of that at the Christmas Masses, please feel free to take a book from the table in the narthex. This is our gift to you this Christmas season. And uh, so there's that. And, and also, I don't know if we have... Um, any of our Haitian brothers and sisters with us at, at this particular Mass, but okay, we do. Uh, Happy Independence Day. It, uh, for those of you who did not know, it, today is the, uh, the Day of Independence for, for Haiti. And so 
congratulations, and uh, it's, it's a lot to celebrate today. The Solemnity of the Mother of God, and, uh, and a new year, Independence Day, and world peace. So, a lot, a lot that we have celebrated today, and that's, uh, that's a wonderful thing. We, um, let's see, I also will be, I'll bless these, uh, these uh, votive candles that someone has brought up, and I hope you all uh, have a wonderful, happy new year and a continued Merry Christmas as we continue the Christmas season uh, through the baptism of the Lord, which we celebrate two weeks from now. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless these candles and all who use them and all who see them. May they uh, increase their fervor in prayer and help them to remember the light of Christ and to bear the light of Christ through their life, through their deeds, and through their words. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, please join in singing number 159, Joy to the World, number 159. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let us our songs and Wild fields and flood, rocks, hills and bay. Repeat the sound in joy, repeat the sound in joy, repeat the sound in joy. 